today we're going to be looking at the night sky from the perspective of this incredible piece of scientific equipment. The Hubble Space Telescope, named after famous American astronomer Edwin Hubble, was launched in 1990. Since then it has given us incredible never before seen views of the universe we live in. Let's use Hubble to take a short look at how stars are born, live and eventually die. We're going to start off by looking at one of the most famous constellations in the night sky that of Orion the Hunter. Famed for the three stars that make up his belt, he was eventually killed by Scorpio, the Great Scorpion. You can also see here the V-shaped group of stars called the Hyades Cluster. They make up the head of the bull in the constellation Taurus, which we'll come to later. The brightest star in Orion, Rigel, in the bottom right hand corner, is the sixth brightest star in the night sky. Zooming in to explore more, we can start to pick out a bright patch of sky underneath Alnitak, Anlam, and Mitaka, the three stars that make up Orion's belt. The closer we get, the more we can see the dark red clouds that surround this area. We are heading for a star nursery, a place where stars are born. This particular star nursery is given the name the Orion Nebula, and it's the nearest such nursery to Earth. The Hubble Space Telescope allows us to keep on zooming in to learn more about how stars are actually made. Gravity is pulling these huge clouds of gas and dust together into bigger and bigger clumps. As the gas and dust collide and rub against each other, the cloud gets heated up. Eventually it gets so hot that nuclear fusion takes place, and this lights up some of the brand new stars you can see here. So that's how stars are born. But what about where they live their lives? For this, let's return to another easily recognisable shape in the sky. It is so famous that it has different names in different countries. For example, here in England we call it the Plough, whilst in America they call it the Big Dipper. It is famous because it easily tells you where you are. These two stars, Dube and Merak, are called the Pointer Stars because if you follow the line joining them, you end up at Polaris, the pole star. Polaris is always directly north, so you always know where you are. Let's zoom in again to a star just above the gap between the last two stars and the handle of the plough. We quickly start to make out a brighter patch that at first look quite dim. As we get closer we can see it's not a star at all, it has the unmistakable swirling arms of a galaxy. It is in fact the pinwheel galaxy. You can see the spiral arms clearer than most of the rest of the galaxy, as that is where the stars like our sun live. The Orion Nebula we have just seen lives in a spiral arm of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. The big yellow bulge you can see here is the centre of the galaxy, where much older stars live. So what happens to a star when it's time for it to die? Remember I mentioned earlier the constellation of Taurus, the bull? Well that's where we're going now. You can see here Orion's belt, so we need to zoom in a little, up and to the right. If you've listened to the very first podcast we ever did, you might already know what's coming. We're heading for what the Chinese used to call the guest star. When they first saw it in the year 1054, it was so bright that they could even see it in the daytime. What they were seeing was the Crab Nebula. Along with the Orion Nebula, it's one of the most famous nebulae in the whole night sky. However, unlike Orion, it's not the birth of a star, but the death of one. We're starting to pick out the dust cloud more clearly now. Despite being formed nearly a thousand years ago, this gas is still expanding outwards at an alarming rate. So what's making it expand? To answer this, we need to know what happens when a star dies. Eventually, a star runs out of fuel to keep it shining. Depending on the size of the star, different things happen. If, like the star that made the Crab Nebula, it was eight times more massive than our sun, it will collapse in on itself and then explode out in a supernova. A supernova is one of the most energetic events in the universe, and when one happens it can outshine a whole galaxy. The Crab Nebula is still expanding 1,000 years later because of the force of this massive explosion. Well that brings us to the end of our short journey looking at the universe through Hubble's eyes. Until next time, remember, science is fun. Mm -hmm.